Hello. Did that. Yeah. Okay, here you go. I'm sorry. Okay, praise God. We are, I think everything is connected. Okay, we are going live. Give us one second here. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. We just want to welcome everybody tonight to the Scribe Hangout, where we are dedicated to bringing the, forth the voice uh, and the heart of the Scribe to individuals around the world. This is the hangout spot for book lovers, artists, fans, business owners, and those who desire to be inspired. In the company of the scribes, you may unlock the scribe within you. Uh, We have a very, very special guest on tonight with us, and I'm just so excited about it. And, you know, before we dive into this dynamic book, Um, that God has placed in her heart to release unto his people. I do want you to go ahead and share this platform on your social media pages. You can go ahead and, um, you know, place it out on Twitter or put it on your uh, Facebook or place it on Instagram so that those that you know who have, um, who love to read books, Uh, Those that you know um, who desire to write, you know, this is the hangout spot for them. Any artists that you know, go ahead and put it in your book club uh, so that they can get on this powerful conversation. But most importantly, in this, we're dealing with the topics that we're going to be dealing with on tonight. You know, anybody that you may know that have ever lost anything, have came into a place um, of brokenness. And and need to be restored tonight is their night um, at the tribes hangout um, to hear a word from the Lord to hear how God restores how God recovers as we deal with um, this book I am giving you the title I'm gonna give you the title in a moment um, but I want you to go ahead and just share this out on your social media platforms because remember here at the scribes hangout you get first-hand information on the process the strategies the tips and tricks of writing and you get the opportunity to get in the mind of the scribe as discuss their project and Elder has a phenomenal guy I'm telling you uh, that is just God is just using um to heal the heart and the minds of people, you know, a- around the world. Right here at the Scribes Hangout, you get information about the new releases, what's hot in entertainment in the arena of gospel. Amen. And most importantly, you get the opportunity to come out to meet, greet, and connect um, with the Scribes. Also, uh, for those, you can also connect with us on the Spreaker platform. On the Spreaker platform. And if you go there and you chat, we can literally chat live with you. So if you have any questions or comments that you may have um, for the elder on tonight, um, we'll definitely, you definitely get the opportunity to chime in with us, to chime in with us. And so I'm just looking forward to it. So let us just have a word of prayer. Let us have a prayer. We're going to um, announce the that we have with us tonight. Um, as well as book, and we're just going to go to um, interview um, with her. We're going to go into this interview with her, so that um, so that you, you guys can hear what it is that God has released through her, and you can connect with her, and also most definitely go out, go out, go out, and obtain um, the book that we're going to be discussing on tonight the book that we're going to be discussing tonight let us go to the lord in prayer oh gracious mighty father we just thank you for this opportunity to come and hang out at the scribes hang out on tonight father god we ask you oh lord god that you would just saturate this atmosphere that you would saturate with the network system that you would saturate wherever we may be around the world in the majestic name 
of Jesus that you would rest upon us, oh God, and give us the, and release the words that is needed for your children on today to bring forth healing and restoration and deliverance, oh God. Send forth, oh God, your word, oh God, that will renew somebody's mind, transform their atmosphere, that will penetrate, oh God, to Lord God, every and and. and cause every demonic influence to flee from their very presence in the majestic name of Jesus. We decree God so that you may increase in this place. Allow your Holy Spirit Father to have his way in the majestic name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, Thank you, Lord. Tonight, amen, at the Scribe Hangout, um, we have with us none other than the Elder Paulette Harper, um, here to discuss her dynamic book that she just released a little bit over a month ago, about a month and a half ago. Um, The title is called, That Was Then, This Is Now, This Broken Vessel restored um and it is such such a powerful um elder um just come on in we just want to greet you thank you for joining us here at the scribes hangout um how are you today well good evening pastor i am doing really good um thank you so much for having me on i'm really looking forward to the dialogue and um yeah it's it's you know it's i'm blessed i am just so blessed Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, um, Elder, this this book, this powerful book that you've written was then and this is now. This is now. Can you tell us, uh, just to give us a little background um, about, you know, what inspired this this book? Awesome, awesome, and she's absolutely right. I mean, she um, definitely, definitely go in, you know, to details of the things that that she went through. And so we're going to discuss some of those things on tonight, and we just thank you for just being, it's just even being very candid and open, um, Elder, with your writing. And because, you know, we're dealing with real people, with real situations. And, you know, so many times we just sweep things under the rug and we never want to deal with the core or the root of issues. 
and um and so people begin to take that baggage you know and carry it for the rest of their lives so i I love how you are just um you are so open um with your story um that in which you've been through you went through here in um with with the book and how you know God laid on your heart to reach um women and you know pastors wives and things of that nature to just have open and real dialogue to so that others can know that it's not just them so um <laughs> Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, because the principles of healing, <laughs> the principles of recovery is always absolutely the same. It, it doesn't matter, you know, um, um, so much of what what the wound may have been and what the brokenness may be. Um, for the most part, the principles are the same. Amen. And so I, I want to jump um right here um right here in the in the in the in the text um on today elder you was talking about you talked about you know the expectations in so i want to come from that that place where people just being set free from bondage and i know one of the areas um that keep us in bondage is the fear of people and so you kind of talk about that in the book um, so can we, let's, let's have a little dialogue about being broke, coming free or, or breaking free from wanting to please everybody else, but losing yourself in the midst of it all. Happy with what we do, so it doesn't matter. And so, um, 
I had to learn how to just accept, you know, what I was going through and believe God to get me through it so that the better could come and not be so good on the haters and the naysayers and, um, but just really hear, you know, put myself in the position of hearing the voice of God and really allowing Him to speak to me and Him getting uh, the glory in, in what I thought was the worst time of my life. Wow, I, I I love the fact that you said, you know, I just accept reality for what it was. And, you know, through that accepting for what it was, you know, um, being able to bring you to a place of, you know, living in reality and overcoming what everybody else, you know, um, had to think about, you know, as well. And, and you said you, you said something about, you know, self-sabotaging, you know, having those thoughts and you know, things of that nature of self-sabotaging and, you know, the enemy bringing forth, you know, condemnation and, and things of that nature. And so if we can just walk down the road of self-sabotaging, because some people People, you know may not understand or realize what do that look like and you know how can I self-sabotage myself and so um, I, you know I just like to just go down that road just a little bit because you know many times we do it but we're doing it so subconsciously that we don't realize that that is what we're doing um elder That's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. You said so many different things, and you know, and just how the enemy used things to set up you know to set up things um and he's meaning it for good and and i love the end of your story that would definitely um get to but god meant it for your good and exactly what this book is um has been published to do to save so many lives going through um depression and oppression and um dealing with the pain and the suicidal thoughts and states of hopelessness and things of that nature you know in your book you talk about um, in in your chapter one you talked about built to stand through it all and um, you talk about you know how God you know built us to stand the test and and the trials um, of of life and 
so I want to ask this question um, how important is it um, when it comes to laying the right foundation in our lives when we're experiencing a traumatic event or life transforming moment I remember sitting out at the um, at the river one day, and I mean everything around me was in total chaos. My life mm. was in chaos, and, and so his word was so powerful that it broke through all the chaos, and I could still hear his. having that proper foundation, I would have failed, I would have stumbled, I may have even, I would have probably went ahead and committed to this if that foundation wasn't there. But because his word was the only thing keeping me sane, when I didn't even feel like I was insane, that I was sane, his word was the one that kept me. And I found so much uh, strength in his word. I mean, I, every day, it was a process. Every day, I got stronger and I got stronger. And I needed the Word of God to fill that void that in my in my heart by that loss. And so, without having a, a proper foundation, we just will not stand. And you know, and the Word of God shows us, tells us, you know, in. Uh, in, the, in my chapter there, in Matthew 7, he talks about um, when the winds come and the rain come and it keeps on the house. And if, you know, the clouds and testings are going to come to us, but then are you going to be able to stand when it comes? And the only way we're going to stand is by the Word of God and, and standing on, on, on that foundation. Amen. You know, someone says that, you know, he's my rock. <laughs> Amen. That he is my rock, and you know, and the other thing that I, the text also tells us that you know he tells us that every step that you take will be firm, and in, that and the only way that our steps can be firm is when we are walking on a solid foundation, um, which is the Word of God. You know, um, we know that you know um, heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will forever stand. And be, so that because God's word is the only thing we we'll ever stand, that which is for everlasting, that is what we need, amen, as our foundation, so that we would have the substance that we need, the substance that we need to conquer, the substance that we need to win um, every day situation and circumstances she was talking about the wind the wave the turrets and it is very descriptive in her book <laughs> uh when it comes down you know breaking down and dealing with the different tor- um torrents and things of that nature um as well as you know dealing with um a faulty foundation um as well and so she's very very um strate- i mean very very descriptive <laughs> um in her book and so she really really pulls you know um the word of god out um so that we can have a great understanding of of god's word um you know in our lives in our lives so um elder if we can just you know, want to deal with your chapter don't get bitter but get better and so many times, you know, we we sit and we dwell in a you know a place of bitterness, and I'm um, in that bitterness, and it it stems to so many other things, and it causes all forms of sickness and malice and things of that nature um, on the inside of us. So, as you was going through your process, as you was going through your process, um. What assisted you or what gave you or what what put you in a state of mind that I choose to get better 
than to be bitter. I like this. Is that don't stay in the wilderness as longer than you have to, longer than required, longer than required. And and we, have, oh my God, we have to understand this as a people of God. You know, there are there are something we will engage into to help develop us. You know, to develop us in the things that God has called forth in our life. We got to understand that the um, Israelites, you know, they had to go down to Egypt, the place where they became abundant to learn the art of agriculture, because that what the Egyptians was very, very good at. And so, but in that process, you know, they found themselves in a place of bondage. But going there, acquiring that that skill of agriculture, it prepared them for the, the promise. It prepared them for the promise so that once they received the promise, land that flowed milk and honey, that they would know how to properly till the ground so that the ground would produce for them, right? And so these situations and circumstances and things that we come, um, that we encounter in life, life, as we encounter life, you know, sometimes, you know, it there is there to develop us for where it is that God is taking us. And so is is and and so it's and I love it because she said it's to better you. Amen. Not to cause you to be it's to, to grow. It's to cause you to develop. And you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, was in prayer and God said, Look, I had conditioned you to position you and said I had to take you through some things in life so you would have the heart to even minister to the people the heart to even um, minister and take care of the people that I've called you to and you know you know how it is if we haven't experienced things you know um, elder what I'm coming to realize is that you know something we haven't experienced things we have a different outlook or different view on how someone should walk out their process, but until you have walked in my shoes, <laughs> I don't need theory. I, I don't need theory when I'm losing my mind. 
you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I don't need theory when I'm being tormented. I, I don't need theory. I need somebody who knows the who knows very thoughts, right? <laughs> who can walk me through my thought process <laughs> and deliver me <laughs> from my thoughts, Jesus. <laughs> And you know, and so, and and what not a better person to do that than someone who has walked the walk, someone yeah. who knows the in and outs, who knows the in, interest in, the the details, who 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 knows who can kind of you know pretty much almost tell me you know exactly what's going on with me, and most importantly, how to come out of it how to come out of it and to be set free. Go ahead, Elder. Yeah, I was just going to say, and, and that's, the, that's the key, um, you know, coming out of it. And so, you know, God takes us through a process that he knows we're able to, um, to, to manage, we're able to go through. Um, it's us who don't feel like we can. You know? mm. But he, of course, doesn't put more on us than we can handle and we can bear. And so, um, going through that process and, and none of us like going through the process All right. it's very painful it is extremely painful but yet going through the process that's where our faith gets you know, uh, refined that's where our faith gets um, increased that's where you know um, we learn to trust God you know more and find out who we really are as well and so you know you go through that process and of course um, you know you want the you want you want to get through it as quickly as you possibly can, but there are some processes that God allows us to go through that take time, you know. And for me, it took a, it, it, I, it felt like I was in a state for such a long time, but I was so, and I think I was in that state for such a long time because I was dealing with so much. I was mm-hmm. in a lot of spiritual warfare. So, I mean, those battles for my life, you know. And being a battle for your very own life, Pray. You gotta fast. You gotta be steadfast. You know, because when somebody else praying for you, mm. or when other people, even when other people are praying for you, they don't know how to pray like you know how to pray. Right. They don't know how to cry out to God and shed those tears like you know how to cry out to God and shed those tears. Because God, you know, His Spirit being within, He knows the the instant of our hearts. He knows the, the core of our hearts. You know, and so when we groan and when we moan and when we cry. That, you know, that's God. And so we have to really get to a place and a point where we're going through the process that we have uh, to do his work within us. And and that, you know, we're going to get to the end. You know, the victory is going to be ours. We're going to get the, the, oh, the reward that, you know, God has promised us. But it's, it's getting through that process, getting through the, um, the you know, the medium. Mm-hmm. The medium mm-hmm. that's before, the medium and the it's right. a medium that it's in the middle, you know, it's in the middle where the struggle is. Amen. Right, right. And trying to pull it all together while we're walking through the medium um, of it all. And, and and this is good because I, I want to transition this particular here. As you're talking about, okay, I'm going through the warfare. I'm I'm having to self in a place and I'm staying and, and I'm staying in here. I'm in this process. Um I've been in this process for a while, and it's because I'm dealing with so many things um, while I'm in the process, and so that's causing my process to be a little longer. I also, um, so I'm going to deal with that because I want to talk about identifying strongholds on the, which is dealing with your tight your your title chapter three, um, on the road to recovery, identifying strongholds, um, and you said something that also very powerful um, that recovery is not microwaved. Um, sometimes we want to, you know, we want a microwave, <laughs> we want a microwave recovery, and and, and, <laughs> and sometimes we sp- and sometimes we handle um, our brokenness sometime in a microwave process, and and instead of being um, instead of getting recovered, we find ourselves um, we find ourselves in a place where um we're in a, a broken state 
and um, we're in a broken state, but also with being in that broken state, because we're in the pretense that we're recovered, we find ourselves in a place where we get we uh, we find ourselves where we're getting wounded even more. And it's easier for us to be wounded even more quicker because we still have a wound that never been healed. And so anything can any any little thing would trigger. Um, that wound being reopened um, because we never took the we never took the true time that was needed to deal with the situations and circumstances or you know or identifying all of the strongholds or the things that you was dealing with um, during that time or during that season and so it, it's it's the time where we no longer cover up um, elder. Um, sweeping our issues under the rug because they they lie dormant for a season and then come back uh, or they, they don't I mean they arrive because they, they never left but they arrive and it, it put us even in a greater desperate situation so let's talk about you know just identifying the strongholds how important it is to be able to recognize and identify the strongholds that are that are hindering you Mm-hmm. And the spirit of heaviness. So, you know, I had to identify those and call them out. Mm-hmm. You know, call each of them out, recognize what they were. I mean, when I was uh, recognized the spirit of depression, I went and looked it up, and I saw that there was many stages of depression. Mm. You know, and I did not, I didn't know that. You know, and I was in, I was in a real, a lower, a real, you know, low stage of depression, and to the point of wanting to kill them. Okay, so as believers, we have to, we have to be about identifying and, and hitting the target with those demons and strongholds that try to operate, you know, in our lives and our surroundings. And so once I um, identify with, you know, what was trying to, you know, um, put me in bondage, what was trying to jail me, put me in jail, what was trying to handcuff me, I was able to take the word of God and pray the Holy Ghost, my sick effectively and really bombard heaven and really calling things out of my own life. And so we have to know what those those demons are that are trying to, you know, uh, snatch the life away from us. And so, you know, Jesus clearly pointed out in John 10, 10, when he says the thief is the one that yes. to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I tell you that you may have life. And so we have to, uh, you know, we have to find out what is it that the thief is trying to steal from me? You know, what is, what is he trying to take, you know, from me? And I refuse to give it up. And so that's where uh, we as believers really have to know our authority. We have to know how to uh, be able to identify uh, those struggles so that we can effectively pray more or pray better, that we can you know, see the hand of God move upon our lives. And, you know, once I started identifying what was, the, you know, the strongholds in my life, they have to bow down. The blood, Amen. Down to the name of Jesus, and they had to, you know, gone out of my life. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, let the kingdom of God suffer 
violence amen and the violence take it by force and so yes. <laughs> he said look uh, we ain't got time to pedicate with the enemy we ain't got time to play with him because he ain't playing with us you know he's not going to play around with you and you know and and i i, I just love spiritual warfare and she gave some very key points you know we have to be a people you know it's a you know to it said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and so many times you know we want to overlook truth elder <laughs> and because we want to overlook truth um we stay in places of bondage we stay in the places of captivity and the enemy continue to hold us um in captivity because we won't deal with the reality of a thing yes i am yeah. dealing with depression you know yes you know i am dealing with suicidal thoughts call those things of, of what it is you know what it is that you're dealing with you know so many times we want to camouflage right right exactly. um what we're going through and what we're dealing with and it hinders us it hurt us and it keeps us just like you said it keeps us in in that place of bondage or in that wilderness experience longer than we have to have to um been and this here in in your text because i this is something i think many can identify with and especially when you're in a leadership role when you're in a leadership role and um in in your in your book you talk you you're, you start off this particular section with who will help the preacher so many times <laughs> as leaders i mean leaders are vulnerable as well and we have those places of vulnerability but so many times we want to have a cape on our chest like we're you know we're superman all the time and that's not the case and so we have to deal with that syndrome um that we have because so many leaders are dying leaders are committing suicide you know you got pastors committing suicide you know uh, quitting walking out of the pulpit and things of that nature because of all the things that they're dealing with they're not you know they're like this who is going to help me i'm, I'm helping so many people i'm pouring out to so many people and here i am i need help and who can I turn to? So let's talk about that um, because leaders are left lonely and abandoned.
away with us, but we also have to be open to um, acknowledging our need. It's, a, it's really about taking that mask off, mm-hmm. you know, removing the mask and coming to grips with, like you mentioned, reality, and then allowing what is real to move us out of our condition so that we can get the, the wholeness, we can get the freedom, we can get the, the get to the place of victory in which we need. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Elder, um, your chapter on the heart, the matters of the heart. Um, um, you, you say you say this, um, and you deal with different types of hearts in 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 that particular chapter. And you you use this. This is a quote out of your book. You said, the events in life will reveal what is within us as individuals. How and why we respond to situations come from the core of who we are. And that is so powerful because, you know, you know, even as I was talking about earlier, you know, we don't deal with the heart issues. We don't deal with the matters of the heart. And because we don't deal with them, we don't experience what we've been through. We're just so busy sweeping things under the rug. And something happens and trigger that that which has been laying dormant. And then we find ourselves doing things that we regret saying things that we regret. So let's talk about how important it is for us to really deal with the matters of the heart and not run them, but um, but not run from them, but deal with them so that we can really be purified to, to be free. Yeah. You know, you know, Jesus talked about the sower and the seed. Mm-hmm. And the seed is Yes, he is. Damage to other areas in our lives and other, you know, parts of our, 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 our 
you're you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, it's absolutely powerful, and which is reality. You know, if you're contaminated, you have to just think about it. If you have um, a contaminated glass of water, water um, that have contamination in it, then a clean glass of water that um, that's not contaminated. If you pour the contaminated water into the clean glass, it now becomes contaminated. So. And, and that is an example that, hey, everything you're touching and everything that we're doing, you know, from the inside out, um, it's contaminated, it's infected because of, you know, the undealt with um, issues um, that we have. And it just it overflows and, and, and really, really hinders every aspect of our lives. But we really sometimes, we just, we don't think about it in its fullness. Um, the full effect that it that it has, you know, in our lives. And so it's important that we we got to be able that's not afraid of examination. You know, um, King David said, you know, search me, Lord. <laughs> you know, search me, Lord. And if you find anything in me that is it, wash me and, and not be washed clean. <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's okay to do some self-examination. Um, you you deal with a time for reality check, and and I I'm gonna just read this statement that you put here, and because it's still in line of what we're talking about. You said, you I had to face the fact that I had put things on the throne of my heart instead of God. I had put all my confidence and trust in something that was crawling right before me. And I didn't know how to handle it. Let's talk about that statement because, you know, you know, there may be listeners out here in, and there may be things that they've placed above just unknowingly. You know, sometimes, you know, things can just, I mean, we can do things not knowing that that is what we are doing. And, and, and we haven't recognized it until we get to that breaking point where it is, um, where it is at a point where, like you used to use the word crumbling right before you realize, you know what, this had become my God. And so how do we get to the point where before things crumble, if we have placed things before God, are there any things that we can foresee or any things that we can recognize to say, you know what, I've placed this before God and how to get it, put it in the correct order. Um, and, and, and so that will help in some safety net in, in the event that it does crumble. Um with it being um, in its appropriate position, rather being in the um, wrong position, which is before God. Right, right. Yeah, you know, when I was um, in the state of the depression and um, I was thinking about um, committing suicide and, and, and going through all those emotions uh, and thinking that um, just that there was no hope. Well, my hope has to be in God. Mm-hmm. You know, my hope, my trust has to be in the Lord. And so when all my energy was going on, you know, uh, you know what was crumbling before me, my marriage and everything else around me, and when I realized that I had put all that other stuff on the throne, that's why I had gotten myself in mm-hmm. the condition of being the that's what led me into wanting to kill myself. Because we should never, uh, for me, I'll put it like, I'll say for, for myself, I, I should have never got myself in that position that I wanted to end my life. Because my life was hidden in Christ. Mm-hmm. Everything that I put on my, you know, all my hope and my dreams in my marriage crumbled. But God was still there. Right. God was my, my deliverer. God was my hope. God was, you know, my restorer. And so I had to, you know, I had to face the real with that, that I put him on the throne, you know, my, my, my ex was on the throne, and everything that encompassed him was on the throne, and where was God at? And so when all that stuff was removed, I was in a state of, 
what am I going to do? But, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Mm-hmm. You know? And I think out of that, realizing that God is my life. You know, but what is my life? And he was going to, you know, bring me back to a place of wholeness. He was going to bring me back to a place of victory. And so um, having to make that, that turn uh, emotionally, mentally, uh, knowing that God, everything that was removed, and he was back in the center of my life, that everything else started to fall into place. Mm-hmm. Everything else started to fall into place, you know. And that's where he wants to bring us, where um, he, I, you know, he shows us those things that uh, that are on the throne. I'm thinking of when God told Abraham to offer up Isaac. Right. <laughs> Isaac, you know, Abraham could have said, oh, no, because mm-hmm. I've been waiting for Isaac for over 25 years. Mm-hmm. He told me to give him to you. But he said, oh, I'm not doing it. But he did. He offered him up willingly to the Lord and God. That's good. You know, yeah, because your money is your God. So we have to find out what is our God. Is it is it our job? Do we spend so much time at our job that we don't have time to, to go to church? You know, we don't have time for the Word, you know. Or is it, you know, um, you know is it money? You know, is it our homes? Is it our jobs? Whatever it is that's pulling my attention toward it. And then ask yourself, okay, if I didn't have this, what would I do? If I didn't have this, where would I go? Because parachute has to be God being the teacher. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, that's that's very good, you know. Where, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things added, you know, unto you. And, um, you know, as we remain a people and stay a people that keep God first, you know, him being first and foremost and, um, and not placing anything else before him, then it keeps us, it, it keeps us in a place where we maintain order. You know, where order is uh, maintained, controlled, you know, and structure, but only through him. It's all done through him. And, you know, um, I, I remember when I was uh, when I was earlier in um, and earlier in my walk and um, was studying uh, Genesis with that with Isaac, uh, with Abraham and Isaac, and I was like, man, I don't know if I can if I could sacrifice. <laughs> you know, if, if I could sacrifice my child. <laughs> But, you know, and you're just going a little bit later and giving Abraham's reasoning. You know, it tells us in the text that Abraham reasoned in his mind that God would raise Isaac back from the dead. That he would resurrect him because he was his promise. And sometimes, you know, God want to know, you know, do you... Thank you, Jesus. He want to know if we are people, are we after what's in his hand or what's in his heart? Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, you know, if I give you what's in my hand, will that is will that become your God? Or am I still your God? And just you said, sometimes, you know, we just have to, he have to, we have to test and see. He have to see where, where do our faith lies, you know. Who do we put or what do we put all of our trust in? And sometimes, we, you know, we may want to begin to put ourselves within those same tests and within those same boundaries to make sure that we're keeping things in line and keeping things in order where God is always first that where God is always first um, and foremost and then it'll, it'll be easy you know um, when, or it'll be a little it'll be a little it'll be more easier when it says you know, 
you have to give this up. Abraham, go ahead and um, and sacrifice Isaac, which was something that he had been waiting on forever. Right. Um, and you know, he was like, "This is my one shot." <laughs> my one. <laughs> And now you're telling me to take it, you know, to take his life, you know, to take his life. And him being obedient, him being obedient, I mean, I, he just, he, Abraham really trusted God. <laughs> he really, really had trust and a faith in God. And and that's what God, God wants us to trust him with everything. Right. And have faith with him in everything. But that comes with putting him first. When we can put him first, then we can trust him with every and anything, you know, that he has given unto us. Um, you talk about this hidden treasure. Um, in, in, in the book, um, in your book, you talk about the hidden treasure. Um, that is on um, the inside of us. What prompted this particular chapter? You know, uh, you know, after we go through so much in life, um, there's always something that God wants to reveal to us. Mm-hmm. You know, there is always something He wants to show us and to open our eyes to. And so, um, when we get refined and everything, the fire we come out as to a go, you know, the the hidden treasure when we come through the fire, you know, we come through the, the test and the, and the trial of life. And so about, you know, really identifying um, who we are, it's identifying God, it is opening up um, so many uh, opportunities for us. It's about late, mm-hmm. you know, it's about coming to, to grips with who you are, it's about who God is in you, you know, and so, um, and let me read this, it says, in my own personal experience, it took me years to get to the of the Lord, but by the grace of God, I made through. I had to realize that God was doing something new, some new things in my life that required me to rely on Him like never before. God was now my husband, who had taken the rightful place in my heart. My decision making, my finances, my ministry. I was now in the position of total dependence on him and no one else. That is a hidden treasure. Mm-hmm. Because up until everything that I was going through, that right there was was in reality. My husband was. Wow. You you yeah. s- you said um you said a whole lot. And 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 even you said God was now my husband. You know, um that 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 there, I mean you said a whole lot, but even that right there, if if many of us um get in and I'm and even right now, you know, my mind is going to those that are single. Um if if being in that coming to that position where the the mindset where God becomes your husband. Um, <laughs> that, you know, that could save a whole lot of um, brokenness. Oh, yes. A whole lot of heartache. <laughs> right. Yes. A whole lot of disappointment. You know, um, you know, it's just like, you know, I always think and reflect about, the, you know, the woman that had the 10 coins and she lost one. And, you know, she instantly knew that she lost one um, because, you know, the divine order was not there. That divine perfection was no longer there. And so she began to search. And she searched. Um, but what I love about her search is that she turned on the light to search. And um, and she turned on the light to search so, so, because then she could see. But so many times, sometimes we're searching in the dark. Yeah. And through our search in the dark, you know, um, we're bumping up and against all different types of things. And we're getting bumped and we're getting bruised and we're getting wounded because we cannot see. 
we cannot see. And, you know, because we cannot see, you know, um, it puts us in a place of, of hindrance. And because we don't know, we don't know where it is that we're going. And so we have, we need the light so that we would know which way it is that we're going. And even with that light, it's to a place, of, a place of purity, you know, and a pu- purity in your mind, purity in your thoughts, you know, purity in your heart, you know, in, in your actions and in your ways. Um, so that, you know, so that the greatness that God has on the inside of you, that, you know, it emerge, um, so that it can emerge, you know, in, in your life, right? Um, even through all the pressures of life, you know, as well, because it's just like the coal that has to go through so much pressure so that the diamond can emerge, And it's something about when the light hit the diamond that just caused it to shine forth, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And so that gets us into your place, your your your, your the text or your your book where you deal with destiny and purpose, and you have one of uh, one of my favorite scriptures. It shaped me inside of. Said, "Oh yes, you shaped me first inside and then out. You formed me in mother's womb." Um, and and, and I, I love that. Um, I, I love Psalms one thirty nine, and um, and one of the things I love about it is that you know God did something very special for us that he didn't place anybody else on assignment to do. He didn't send the angels to do it. You know, he didn't send the Holy Spirit to do it. He didn't send his only begotten son. He didn't send our Lord and Savior Christ to do it. Him himself, you know, knitted us together in the womb of our mothers because we were so delicate, you know, to him with what it is that he called for us to do. And he called for us to be that he himself would come so that he can ensure that we had everything on the inside of us we needed for the journey. He was building the strong foundation from the inside even then. Right. <laughs> so let's just talk about this in this um here in the text, um, where you, you say, you know, you knew me inside and out. You you know, you you know every bone in my body. You knew exactly how I was made. It. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking at Psalms 139 and 15 that you have in the book. He said, "I was made bit by bit. How I was structured from nothing into something." Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it talks about how everything that God already knows, every in our head, our shapes, um, everything about us, and. Um, I believe it's, it's in this chapter as well as, you know, even when you talked about your mistakes um, that you made, and even with the mistakes, God knowing that all well as well. And it's still not, it's still not, um, with even with your mistakes, it's still, God does still not deny you of the purpose and the destiny that he's called out for your life. So let's talk about that, Elder. Oh, glory. <laughs> and, yeah, God's purpose, you know, continued. And, you know, the, the, the man that was in my life for, you know, the 22 years, he was alive for that season. But once he was removed, my life, God was expecting my life to continue. He was still expecting me to preach the word. He was still expecting the pastor. He was still expecting his, the gifts and the calling of God. Amen. He doesn't. He doesn't take his gift or even his anointing away from us because we go through something in life, you know, because, our, you know, the, the, you know, the trials and the, 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 the limits that we go, the chaos that we go through, the pain and the heartache, you know, that, 
doesn't, you know, um, doesn't stop God anointing us for work, God anointing us for service, you know. And so destiny and purpose is about identifying why we're here. It's identifying why why God created us. And then it's being able to move uh, in that creativity, being able to move um, in that revelation in which he has, um, he has, you know, shown us. And so, um, you know, I, I put in here, I say, God is expecting you to finish your assignment, no matter what you face, what odds are against you, what mountains you are in, how high the mountains you think you can't climb. You are required by God to rely on him and depend and trust that everything is going to work out. Amen. Amen. And that's one of the things I love about God is that before we ever had any history, your 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 purpose was already assigned to you. Um, your destiny was already marked out. He said, I've declared the plans for you. And, you know, and one of the things I love about God, his plan is established. We just have to walk out his established word. We got to stop doing our own background checks, um, credit check, and things of that nature, and determining if God's word is still true for our life. Because God is a God that cannot lie, and his word will forever stand. He said, look, when I send my word forth, he said, my word is going to accomplish the very thing in which I sent it forth to do. Amen. It's going to perform it. And it doesn't matter, you know, what has happened, what has taken place, you know, even the things that is to come. His word is his word, and he's going to bring it to pass. We got to stop trying to figure out for ourselves and totally rely and totally depend on God in spite of our situations, in spite of our circumstances, allow our past to be our past, move in our present, not um, move in our presence um, in Christ Jesus and not allow our past to define our and hinder us from moving in our future. We serve at, we serve a God who is Al and Omega the beginning and the end of all things he knew those things was going to happen amen but he still chose you he still anointed you he still appointed you my god Uh, for the very thing in which is called forth in your life he said from the wound uh from the wound I, i i called you and i set you apart to do that very thing so people of god let us not deny amen deny the word of God from manifesting in our lives because of the things that we've been through um the situation and circumstance that has been before us those things just assist and help in the quantification the qualification of you operating and moving in the very thing that God has called for for you to do Amen. Glory to God. And we, you had Paul killing Christians. And, you know, on his Damascus Road experience, then he found himself in a place um, where a, a, he meet Jesus. And he found himself in a place that he's no longer murdering Christians. He's now building them. Amen. He's building them. He's converting others and building churches and you know and and still in these days right. training and teaching the word of God as we read his accounts and we read the things that he did teaching and, and preaching and um the gospel to train and equip. He's still equipping, you know. Um for us to walk in the way the same people that he at one at once upon a time was crucifying once upon a time was giving um casting the lots for their death right. amen um glory to god thank you jesus um glory to god so here um elder um you talk about transition um transition to position and you 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 write in um, 
you talk about an alignment. Coming into alignment. <laughs> Coming to the place of agreement with the word of God and the plan of God. How important is that um, in the life of a child of God? Um, how important is that alignment in one's life? Yeah, you know, when, we, when we're going through um, difficulties in life, it takes it a support. You know, it, it can take a benefit of our course. And so, um, as a believer, we always want to be aligned ourselves, you know, with, with God, with His will. You know, not our will, but His will for our lives. And so, um, that particular, uh, you know, chapter, transition to position, it is really about getting through, it's about getting through um, all the heartache that I had faced and through and got to find into a place that I could just really move in my gifting, move in my calling, move in what God had to do, um, and, and be in a position to really, you know, be extremely blessed of the Lord, you know, and be in a position where doors be opened up for me, you know, be in a position where my mind is, is clear, and, and being in alignment and agreement to, to, to God, with God, and, and, you know, His purpose for me, and, 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 and being in an agreement with God was doing, you know, and where He was taking me, and, and um, being in the place that I'm in agreement with God's Word, you know, and then, you know, it's just about um, identifying where you are, where you can go, you know. And so all everything that I had gone through was to get me into the place of transition, get me to a place of position where God was, um, you know, Jesus was Lord, Jesus is Lord over my life, and I'm doing what he's called to do, and I'm living in that place where God is truly pleased with my life. Amen. Amen. That place of transitioning. And I, I oh God, thank you. That place of transitioning, positioning yourself, um, transitioning, coming from one state to another state, coming from a broken state to a state of restoration, you know, coming from a hurt place to a place of being healed uh, coming from a bitter place place of, of being blessed amen and, and being able to look at things from a pers- a different perspective amen in life and so i want to read this this is coming from your chapter title um now um and um oh it is and and now this is the title and it and it says this and that's a great place even right here where we're talking about transitioning it says, would you allow me to travel from place to place in your heart? The place that have been uncultivated. Those places that are in and unfruitful. Would you allow me to bring a refreshing to those areas that are dry, brittle, and parched? Would you allow me to pass through your life and visit places that have been uninhabited? That place that I have never, I have not been allowed before. Allow me to move the pain of your past. Allow the bruises to heal. Open up. And the new things that I chose to do in and through you shall come forth. And sure, as I am God, I will take you to a place. You have never traveled before, save the Lord. Glory. This is powerful. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Oh, I just, I felt, I, I just felt that, you know, um, and being in that place uh, of just surrender mm-hmm. is really being in that place of surrender, and I'm speaking to me in that place because the thing about, you know, this is at the end of the chapter. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
speaking, you know, prophetically at the chapter one, I was talking about my struggle. You know, I was talking about my pain. I was talking about depression. I was talking about suicide. Mm-hmm. That's the process that I was going through to get me to this place where I could I could hear from God. Yes, Lord. I could, speak. I could speak prophetically as 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 He gave me, you know, the words. And so that the the that's where I'm whole. That's where I'm, I'm completely whole. That's where I've been delivered. That's that's that process of getting me to this place that I speak this, and it just, I mean, we're in 2017, and it's just as terrible. Right. <laughs> Coming off the pages as when I first wrote it, you know, but that's how powerful that word Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord. You know, even with going through these, um, I mean, at the at these particular chapters, you know, it, it it's bringing me, you know, to that place, you know. And I just think the, it's people that that's right now that you're in that place where, look, I, I'm I'm I've been, I mean, I've been through every stage, or I'm in several stages of you know maybe depression the suicide the places of hopelessness whatever you know those stages may be you know it it made me think about um the book of joshua it made me think about the book of joshua where um the children of god and he was telling joshua look you're getting ready to 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 help them Cross the Jordan. You get ready to take the Israelites to the Promised Land, in which I have, um, which I have spoken, which I have given unto them, and you know, and even as you know, God just just use you to just write the, the text out, you know, through your life, and you know, I'm just seeing the Word of God just coming true in your life. That for as even the Israels, they was getting, I mean, the Israelites, they was getting ready to to cross over the Jordan, you know, and he told them, and he said, look, we see the Ark of the Covenant, when you see God, when God moved, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the, uh, of the, of the Lord your God and the priests and Levites bearing it, when they, when you see them move, then you got to get out of your position and follow them. And then he told them, look, you have to follow them because where I'm getting ready to take you, you have never been before. You have never been before. I'm getting ready to take you through some places that you've never been before. So you have to follow me. And so just like you said, coming into that place of humility and um and seeing god and following god putting god before you because he even told them you guys got to stay behind a hundred cubic feet i mean a thousand cubic feet behind the ark of the covenant and what he was just saying look everything got to stay be un- everything has to stay behind me or under me you know submitted under me hum- you know humility and just sick just walked out walked out here in the then the text i mean the text the scripture and then just walking god is just walking his word out or had walked his word out through your life and then the prophetic utterance <laughs> amen of the word just like oh my god you know and we gotta get to those places right where you know those are real questions that god is really asking right now and as he's knocking at your door as he's knocking at the door of your heart Will you let him in? Yeah. Will you let him in? And you know, I think that the time is now. And so, Elder, I'm going to ask that, you know, if you can render us up a prayer, amen, for those that are under the sound of our voices and those that will come and listen to the replay who is in this place, a broken state, in a, in a broken state, and who need to be restored, who need to go through the process that it takes to be restored from from a place of brokenness and to be recovered into their wholeness. What is that God has called for for them to be so that they can have a that was then and this is now moment. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I do.
not be for the anointing. Yes, Lord. That the anointing would break every yoke of bondage, Lord God. That there'll be some that I have said, Lord God, something that I have been ministered to, that, that we both have shared, Lord God, that will pierce their hearts, Lord God, and bring them to a place of wholeness, to a place of hope, to a place of joy, to, to a place of duration, Father God. We, we know, Father God, that all of our hope is in you, O oh God. We know that all of our hope is in you, O oh God. And for that there is no situation that is too difficult for you. There is no problem that you cannot solve. Thank there you. is no, um, no situation and no chaos and no trial and t- and temptation, Lord God, that, that we face that you, Lord God, have not known about first, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are making a way of escape for all those who call upon the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you have um, you will gird up their heart, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord. God. And yes, you will give them the strength to endure, Lord God. Give them the strength and courage to go on, Father yes, God. God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we just bless you and give you your name all the glory. And Lord God, I just pray that anyone, Lord God, that's listening, my God, will just hear, Lord God, what you have, what you are doing, and what you have done in our lives, Lord God, and Father God, that they will uh, have a yes, uh, Lord. Of faith to believe themselves, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Father God, we come against the enemy right now. Yes, God. And we just pray, Father God, in the powerful name of Jesus, that the enemy, we render him uh, void, we render him, yes. Lord God, uh, powerless, Father God, in the name of Jesus. He must bow down to the word of God, to the power of God, to the to the blood of Jesus. The blood is against him, Father God. In yes. Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you, you your word declares that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I just speak freedom, Lord God, to every every ear that hears, oh God. Father, I speak freedom and liberty and deliverance, Lord God, yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. And that you fill that void in the eyes of of your people who are listening, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you and give your name the praise and all the glory. I just cover them with the blood of the Lamb and just declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And any tongue rises up against them, Lord God, you will show uh, them to be in error. And Lord God, we thank you for right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen to God be the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God in this place. We are definitely at the scribes hangout. (laughs) Well, the anointing of God. Amen. Is just flowing through the scribe tonight you know glory to god thank you jesus um elder paulette it is definitely an honor and a pleasure we have been um we have been diving in in her book on tonight that was then and this is now um a broken vessel restored a broken vessel restored and it has definitely definitely been a very powerful um conversation on tonight and i just want to read over her chapters then i'm going to let you guys um get her contact information and find out where you can pick up this amazing book um chapter one is built to stand through it all chapter two don't get bitter get better chapter three on the road to recovery identifying strongholds chapter four matters of the heart is that really me god chapter five hidden treasure chapter six destiny and purpose chapter seven let the praise begin chapter eight season of recovery chapter nine transition to position and chapter ten and now and my God, um, glory to God, very, very powerful book. That was then. This is now. This broken vessel restored. And we have had none other than the elder Paulette Harper with us on tonight. Elder, can you tell us how to get in contact with you? Um, and where can they pick up this dynamic book from? Twitter and then also Instagram as well. They can order copies of 
majority is of all of my books on Amazon and Barnes Noble. They are available in ebook format and then also on in paperback as well. If they want to uh, get an autographed copy, they can email me at um, call it at paulaharper.com. Awesome, awesome. And I heard that those other, that they can see, they can go and obtain all of your books or get any of your books on Amazon. So get, let us know about a couple of your other projects that you have out. Um, I have a, uh, I just uh, released a, a small powerful book that has been titled Faith for Every Mountain. It's a quick, powerful read that I will really encourage uh, anyone that's going through course talks about faith is to deal with everything that we go through in life. But that was just released um, about a, uh, maybe about three weeks ago. And then I'm working on a, um, a, a fiction novel. If, they, if, if your readers, you know, listeners like to, you know, inspirational romance, my book, People, Faith, and Revealed is available. That is the 2017 Emma Award winner for Best Inspirational Romance. Okay. I really encourage them to grab a copy of that as well. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, you've heard um, none other than the elder Paulette Harper, who is an author. She's an also an entrepreneur. Um, elder, can you t- um, tell us what it is what it is that you do in your business? I'm sorry, I forgot to read your bio. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Connect with the elder author, entrepreneur, Paulette Hopper. Amen. Um, definitely go out and pick up. That was then, this is now, and um, the faith that moved mountains. And um, the novel, the romance novel, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but go and pick it up. Go check her out. Just go and check out the author and that in which she have. And, and, and pick up. I'm telling you, this book is very, very powerful. It is a very powerful. I, I recommend it. I recommend it. If you got a book club, y'all need to get, read this book right here. <laughs> read this book here. Um, read this book. Um, it will help you. You have a ministry. Grab the book. <laughs> you know, you have a women ministry. Grab the book. Um, and and you guys use it in your um your women ministry. Use it as a curriculum in your women's ministry. Um, to to minister and and mention some things in here that she deals with. She's like I said, very candid about that. Many may not want to talk about, but they're dealing with it. And so, with you guys orchestrating it and start using it as a curriculum in the women ministry when you when you guys are having your gatherings, it can help deal with. It can help the women that are in your circle deal with these forms of issues in 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 matters that has taken place that that dealing with on the inside but there's a mask and so when they look at how candid she is and how god brought her out it will help them come out of their dark places it'll help them amen come out um of 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 hiding behind out of the baggage that is keeping them spiritually dead mentally and emotionally drained and tired and tormented so that they can be free it is a powerful i just can't stress enough how powerful this book is (laughs) um right god really anointed her hands god anointed her hands through the the through the through the 
life that she lived amen and through the life that she have lived and all that he has done unto her just being that living vibrant testimony for the kingdom of god and it is amazing and absolutely powerful elder i thank you so much for being here with us on tonight at the scribes hang out um Uh, thank you thank you thank you again each and every last one of you we do want to thank you so much for hanging out at the scribes hang out with us where we are dedicating to bringing forth the voice and the heart of the scribes to individuals around the world um if you can go ahead and just um like this broadcast and also go to scribes dot kingdominfluencers.net and right there I'm sorry dot com um, scribes I'm sorry go to www.kingdominfluence.com amen and you can see what it is that we're doing you can reach out to us at scribes at kingdominfluencers.com if you want to come and share your story share what it is that God has um, that God has birthed out in you um whether it is a book whether it is a, a song whether it's a play um that you have written and just come out and hang with us at the scribes hangout so that others can see what it is that god is doing in you through you and around you so that you can touch lives of many um of many um through this particular platform we definitely would love to have you here with us i am your host publisher and author Deron Shay Zorn and again thank you for hanging out at the Scribe Hangout with us on tonight in Jesus name we'll see you guys next week amen good night good night, good night. stop this here